welcome to your Monday edition of Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. It's been an eventful few days, but here we are. New week, new start, and Singaporeans all coming together uh, now. Looking forward towards National Day. That's right. Um, and speaking of people coming together, I mean, I actually ventured out to the beach this weekend. Mm -hmm. I had Did a little bit of work. <laughs> Sorry? Did you regret it? Um, no, no, because I was socially distant from everyone else. Um, and I think a lot of it is down to, to your personal responsibility, making sure that you're not calling too many friends down. Like, mm -hmm. keep it small, man. Yeah. Keep it small. Five Less people. than five. <laughs> it's the safe bet to go. Uh, but we have an exciting lineup today. We've got some great guests coming on, um, providing a lot of insight going forward into our lives as we move on with things. Mm -hmm. We talk about being united and being an inclusive society. There may be situations where you find yourself being excluded, not of your own choice. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got two guests coming on who have experienced a fair share of that. The first guest, though, who is going to share a little bit more, uh, he is not a first hand experience of it but he is parent uh by haki kaizan who is going to come and join us we're going to get him on the show Yay. he's back in singapore the man himself <laughs> is back on our pitches <laughs> and you. playing for tampanese rovers well when you guys when when the league resumes get Hopefully. back out there you'll be with the boys of tampanese rovers how does it feel to be back uh feel fresh and feel brand new though it's so good, though. We're including it. you back in our footballing society. Like, we, we are Thanks, welcoming man. you back with open arms. I mean, seriously, you are probably one of the best centre-backs in the region. You have, <laughs> like, when we think of football and Singaporeans, we think of you. Mm. Like, Thank you. <laughs> you've, you've flown our flag high, <laughs> and um, today we're having a discussion two prongs here. Inclusion right. back into society back here in Singapore and how you're settling back in, but also because of your daughter, okay. uh, who was born just left. If, if I can use the Don't hashtag let, that, yeah. that you guys use. Moza uh, was born. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Moza? Um, well, first thing first, uh, when, when we knew about Moza uh, mm -hmm. during the fifth month uh, pregnancy uh, scan, yep. mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the doctor told us that uh, the, hand, the, the right hand is, uh, is not there. So basically, it was, it was on the left first, you know. So then she, she doesn't tilt on the right mm -hmm. and... The doctor says, okay, maybe you go down and have some sugar, let her, let her, let her shift onto the right side. So to get in more detail, then we, we went down and we got back. And the shock was there. And we look at the screen. I was just like leaning back and thinking whether this is real or this is dreaming or whatnot. So yeah, there it is. Uh, the news is there. Um, it's a difficult three more months uh, for my wife to go through uh, since it's a fifth month uh, pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So the next three months was like all sad and sorrow uh, after she delivers. Yeah. But obviously you guys had to turn that around, right? I yep. mean, you are now parents of a child with a disability. Correct. Um, and obviously that's changed your life yep. in mm. quite a lot of ways. Yep. How was it as a parent adjusting? Okay, first things first, um, during that three months period, um, obviously we did a lot of uh, soul searching individually and as a group as well, talking to both sides of parents, um, looking, at, looking at options medically or whatever. Um, <clears throat> but we managed to, to outgrow ourselves and gain confidence from there, um, telling ourselves that, look, we have to go public about this. And since we go public, about Moza, there's a lot of other parents that email us wanting to meet us and because all this while they are hiding about their child as well. Mm. So this is something special that we, we thought that, hey, look, this, it, it turns out to be, to be a beautiful thing, you know. So, you know, we, we get them together they, in privately, mm -hmm. uh, we get them together and they tell us their stories and whatnot. So it's, it's a beautiful thing at the end of the day. Looking at your family, though, you yeah. and Norfa have a lot of love to give. So yeah. if anyone was going to be uh, parents of a child with disability, I think you guys are probably the best place people because you have so much love to give. Yeah. I mean, you've got three kids in total. That's right. And you've uh, been very vocal about the whole process. Yeah. You know, the, the, you've built that community and that support system for people to approach you very willingly. Right. Um, maybe what are some of the things that you've learned out of this process? 
You know, Barbara, I start to tell myself that, look, the more we, we try to hide things, the more that people will look at you in a different angle. What's the point? At the end of the day, just live life as it is. You know, just go out there. Let people say what they want to say. You know, at the end of the day, we are strong enough. We, we knew that this is the thing that, uh, you know, God gave us. And we accepted it, uh, you know, with, with love and with pure joy. I'm sure the next uh, people out there would understand you mm. and, you know, they would embrace the same uh, love as well. So we try to be as positive as we can as parents. Um, now it's just that going to build Moza's uh, mindset now. Well, yeah, she's nine yeah. years old, primary three at the moment. So nine years old going 19. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> being a <laughs> teenager is going to be a whole new ball TikTok. game. <laughs> so hopefully after the break, uh, we're going to bring someone on who's going to shed a little bit more light of what it's like to grow up as a person with disabilities uh, to see how she can shed some light as well. But just before we go and yep. obviously um, into that short break, as a footballer, I'm sure you're a big champion for sport, especially for Moza, right? Yes. So how have you, just very quickly, how have you encouraged her to do sport? Um, she, surprisingly, she picked up a lot of things uh, by herself. Um, we brought her swimming, she, ad she adapted it well. We brought her to rock climbing, she liked it. I, I'm just not so sure what she doesn't like, you know? So she's into mostly everything, but um, you know, there's one story that I always relate myself to her whenever I, I don't do well in, in my games. And, uh, because she, she kept telling me, say, Daddy, if I can do it, you, you can. Wow. Yeah, so. <laughs> That's her schooling oh, you. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go for a short break. When we return, we're going to have one of Singapore's most incredible athletes joining us here on Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. Don't go anywhere. So it's lemon and lime and everything nice. Looking forward uh, to a nice dip, with great flavors. This is where we're gonna have a chance to interact with our national archer from Team Singapore, and of course having our SSI edition right back in action as we bring forth to you the next episode of What You Cooking Fast Forward. to kick back with Kelly and Barbara. Now, aside from Baihaki with us, we've also got three-time Paralympic gold medalist, one-time IPC gold medalist, and two world records in the 50-meter backstroke uh, S2 and the 100-meter backstroke S2. It is Yip Pin Siu. Hi, everyone. I was like, the most celebrated Singaporean <laughs> athlete ever. Like, yeah, I was just like, I need to make sure I get all, <laughs> all the medals right. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? It's my pleasure. Um, it's nice to be out um, in this uh, whole situation and actually be talking and advocating about um, inclusivity. Yeah. So it's really nice to be here today. Thank you. So tell us a little bit more. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you were diagnosed with Charcot Marie Tooth at two. Mm. Uh, what exactly is it? So when it first happened, the doctors didn't know that it was Charcot Marie Tooth because this is actually a very rare condition that generally doesn't happen um, 
until maybe later in life. Okay. So um, growing up, I was diagnosed as muscular dystrophy. So um, it's a condition, it's pretty similar, but it's a condition where the nerves um, kind of slow down and the muscles uh, receive signal from the nerves at a slower pace. So eventually, if I don't use them, like for example, uh, when I was young, I was able to walk. Uh, I was able to grip better. But as I get older, the condition deteriorates mm. and uh, the signals are even slower to the muscles. Mm. Right. So, uh, but you started competing competitively at the age of 12 when most of us, like me, I was still trying to pass my PSLE <laughs> Chinese and you were out there like competing. How was primary school for you? Uh, um, primary school was difficult for me, but I think personally, I'm somebody that uh, I'm pretty cheerful, I'm positive, so I didn't really uh, let it hit me a lot. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I didn't really have friends in school, but uh, I think my childhood was still pretty normal because I grew up with two elder brothers. And my brother and my mom, my parents would uh, let me do everything that they do. Such that like growing up, I had this mindset that I could do anything. Nobody told me I couldn't do anything and I loved it. So the, at the time when my parents were starting to get worried for me, like maybe going out late at night or things like that. <laughs> it's okay, my parents don't worry. <laughs> and then they would tell me that, no, you shouldn't do this and blah. They are like, no, I can do it. I can do everything. So yeah. I'm drawing a lot of similarities. I mean, three of three siblings, three siblings, mm -hmm. um, two brothers especially, because yeah. Moses got two brothers as well mindset of the mindset if of I like, can do it you can, I can do it do I can do it. anything <laughs> so so then like you're talking about in that in those primary school years it gets a little bit tough and I think the conversation that we wanted to have between the two of you was as parent how can you learn from Pinsu um how to deal with someone who's going through all these sorts of things like it, it can't be hard I mean Moses P3 now yep. and before you know it she's going to be in secondary school but but even hard in, truth but even in primary school like primary school kids have zero filter they can yeah. be mean unintentionally so um and it, and it can be hard to forge your own way right so yeah. sort of like let's 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 now knowledge it's conversation yeah. between the two of you <laughs> like, hey, how are? so honestly when i was young i would hide my disability okay. i used to wear a gun understand so like i would wear jeans with it there was this phase where I, i'm i'm pretty girly but there's this phase where i didn't wear like skirts or dresses because i didn't want people to see sure. But I eventually outgrew it when I started swimming. Okay. Yeah. So that's Moza also. Uh, well, you guys for, toyed with prosthetics for a while, right? I remember seeing a post. Yeah, mm. correct. For a while, we, we tried to to get ourselves like this plastic uh, made prosthetics for Moza, seeing that if there's any possibilities, like, you know, it can be a second option thing. <clears throat> but um, it seems like um, my wife is the one you know, that, that does all the girly things with her, putting on dresses and all and stuff like that. What we instill in Moza is pure love. I think we, we can't take it away because um, it's, it's her daily life that she has to go through in school. Um, you know, P1 kids, P, P2 kids looking at her and say, hey, she doesn't have a hand, you know, things like that. And she has already adopted it in a way that, well, I'll just keep quiet and move on. So it's, it's not easy for kids though. I mean, for us as adults, maybe we can just, all right, she's a kid. But for Moza herself, mm. I can... I still struggle. Yeah. When people throw insults at me, yeah. I still struggle. Yeah, so okay. when, one thing my mom taught me back then yeah. was that when people stare at your legs, you just stare back. Ah, I don't know if that's that a, that, that is a suggestion. It's some sort of a, like a challenge. To be beating somebody, <laughs> but I, I found that it was it, it kind of helped me because like when you look at when you look back at them and then you, for me I I think I asked them um, why what's wrong then they wouldn't dare to really talk. Sure. Yeah, mm. but I think it's extremely important growing up in a loving household. Yeah. When the people around you accept you, you can also truly fully accept who you are. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, amazing. Correct. And so when you went into secondary school, you were given the option of deferring your O-levels for one year um, while you prepare, uh, prepared mm. for the Beijing Paralympics, right? Yes. Uh, but you were like, no, I'm going to do both of them <laughs> at the same time. I, was, I couldn't even pass my O-levels well. Um, but what made you take that choice on to take on both your studies and compete, you know, for and prepare for the Paralympics? Um, I was 
really young. And one thing that I'm really grateful about was my was that my parents really allowed me to choose what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. They trusted me to make my own decisions. And as a kid, I just didn't want to graduate one year later than my peers. So I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do it, sure. So I swam, uh, I will wake up at five, then I'll go to the pool, go to school, go back to the pool, do some homework, some, and then go to sleep. <laughs> so you're basically, basically, yeah. <laughs> basically, you've been living the life of a pro athlete for since you were 12. Yes, but like with a lot of more studying that I wouldn't want to in between. <laughs> but but it, was, it was a really good uh, experience to learn time management and prioritizing my things from that early age. Mm. And it's yeah. interesting because Moses really picked up on swimming as well, right? Mm. Yeah. She's, she's quite keen on I mean, aside from football, because <laughs> okay. I think she has more football jerseys than I do. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, she's, like, she's really embraced swimming. Do you think there's something about swimming that gives something else you know maybe a sense of freedom yeah something like that maybe something uh swimming is a sense of first enjoyment they can splash the water around and from there she took it into another level where she tried on a, some you know freestyle and uh, the other styles and stuff so it's pretty amazing that you can see progress in whatever that she likes yeah. and from there when she started telling me that daddy look i want i wanted to do proper swimming this time so yeah, it's my turn now to put her onto a onto the platform that she wanted. Aww. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> so do you think swimming's a great platform for people with disabilities? I think sports is a great platform for everybody, regardless if they have a disability or not. Um, sports has given me so much in life. I wouldn't be where I am today because of sports. But really, it's the mindset change. Um, physical, physically, I'm a lot healthier than a lot of people my age. Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's uh, given, given me a lot more confidence. True. When I was younger, I wasn't confident at all. Mm -hmm. Now when people stare at me, okay, you know, when I was maybe like 12, 13, 14, when people started staring at me more, mm -hmm. I would think that, oh, maybe it's because... Um, I'm them like chill. No, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love yeah. the confidence. Okay. That I have. Yeah. <laughs> like, like because of, of me as an athlete, but not because of that. I'm somebody with a disability. Mm. So really, sports has given me so much in life. Oh, that's great. Now, aside from the the athletic side, of course, you know you've you've had to deal with a lot of people looking at you uh, because of your disability. Mm. So especially going into those teenage years, I mean, being a teenager is hard enough. Um, do you have any advice as, you know, Moza goes into those teenage years? Um, yeah, I'm worried, man. <laughs> <laughs> right, like, <laughs> but Terry, yeah. and like, it's not even the teenage years anymore, it's like the tweenage years. Yeah, yeah. this is like social media. Like, social everything media, is a yeah. conversation, everything, uh, there, there's so much awareness about different things. Um, they are growing up in this, this woke generation, apparently, is what it's called. Um, yeah, so do you have any advice based on your experience for Bayaki mm -hmm. um, as the parent going into it? Like, how can he better help her make that adjustment going into puberty in the teen years? I think they're already doing a great job, loving her the way she is, um, yeah. giving her uh, things that they think are good for her. But, but one, if, if I really had to say something, it would be to um, allow her to find her passion and really encourage her to do it. Yeah, Don't be the one that tell her she cannot do certain things in life because yeah. of her disability. Correct. And Bahaki, what about other parents out there? Because like you said, you guys aren't alone. There is an increasing number of people that have come to you. What, yeah. What's the number one advice that you give to other parents out there who might be struggling with how to deal with having a child who has disabilities? No, Kelly, this is a thing where it involves um, progress. It doesn't... It doesn't make you think that, oh, I'm okay tomorrow. You know, it's not an overnight thing. You know, it's a, it's a daily process where you have to face um, the pinch of it and you have to learn how to accept the thing. So this is, this is one process that um, is pretty difficult. I myself go through it as well. Um, only that as a sportsman myself, um, I think it's much easier uh, compared to the ones outside maybe because, uh, you know, the applications that we had. 
uh, being being a sportsman, you know, mm. being inside the field, you know, you are demanded by results and there's pressure, 90 minutes and stuff. So our minds are going through, my mind is going through the same approach. So, but for parents out there, I can say that every day you have to take it step by step, day by day, and learn a lot of patience. Yeah. Mm. Thank not, you. Yeah. Not to worry about the things that you cannot control, True. but to focus on what you can focus Correct. on. Correct. Mm. Exactly. Absolutely. Correct. Thank you. Guys, you, you are like a bundle of wisdom. Sam, no, and it's such a heartwarming conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all warm and fuzzy and sad. So we're going to take that warm and fuzzy feeling and then turn it into a very sweaty feeling. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go for a short break. When we come back, we've got a short workout with Barbara and I. But guys, Pinsu, Bahaki, thank you so much no for really sharing. Bad. I think yeah. encouraging the conversation yeah. around inclusivity is something that we definitely need to do. Together, we can stand united. And it's not just on the the basic fronts but it's on all fronts mm -hmm. and it starts from a community mm -hmm. level as well so i'm sure if you have any other questions you can always reach out to pinsu and by hockey on social media and i'm sure they'll be more than willing to answer your questions we are going to go for a short break but stay with us here on kickback with kelly and barbara It's lemon and lime and everything nice. Looking forward uh, to a nice dip, with great flavors. This is where we're going to have a chance to interact with our national archer from Team Singapore and of course having our SSI dietitian right back in action as we bring forth to you the next episode of Watcha Cooking Fast Forward. Inclusivity here on Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. I decided to include all sides of your glutes and legs in our quick workout that we do to wrap up every single episode. It's Basically, it's a, all about the legs. It is all about the legs. It's going to be a four minute circuit, which you can then repeat as many times as you want to burn up as many calories as you physically possibly can and earn yourself a little bit of. <sighs> supper okay are cool. you ready i'm ready what are we doing first okay so first thing we are going to be doing is a side to side lunge let's go over oh. to the side Stop. down up oh down up. <laughs> back okay. up so your feet stay in the same place yes feet stay in the same place you go down we're going to be doing these for 40 seconds before we rest for 20 seconds and basically you only really want to go as far down as your heel can stay on the ground. Yes, correct. So if you look at the difference in height between Kelly and myself, like Kelly has the ankle mobility and the hip mobility to get basically into a squat. 
Um, whereas I, three more seconds. Not so much. All right, so it gets to the point where and if rest. I go any, oh, if I go any lower, my heel comes off the ground. Okay, so for the next <laughs> move, I want you to put one leg in front of the other. So left foot forward, right leg behind. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to Split lunge squat. down. Okay. And then when you come back up, I want you to touch your back ankle. So with your touch opposite it. hand. Okay. Okay. Cool. Got you it. Ready? And we're just doing one side. One side for 40 side. seconds. Let's go. So down and touch. Down, down and touch. touch. Ooh. Down and touch. You're you want to really make sure you're landing light. Yeah. You'll feel this on your glute of the front leg as you're pushing forward. I feel it. You feel it? I feel it. Nicely done. <laughs> you got 20 more seconds. We're, We're also testing there. my balance. It's a great balance technique. And honestly, using single leg yeah. techniques is a great way of working on the strength equally of both your legs because we usually tend up to be sort of like stronger on one side, weaker on the other. And then Three you more seconds. overcompensate, right? And rest. <sighs> and now that we've done one side, we gotta means go do the other side. So right leg in front, left leg behind. And like I said, you will typically find that one side is more stable than the other. We started on our normal. less stable side, the left leg. So this one's gonna be, ah, uh, yeah, good. There's you, three, <laughs> two, one, let's go. Lunge, Drop down, and tap. Kick up. Kick up. Yeah. And make sure you're dropping down low into that lunge. Don't have to touch the floor exactly, but just hover somewhere just above it. Yeah. Booty burn. Uh, it's a bit of a quad burn as well. Yeah, that's true. You wanna also, in order to engage the booty, you want to make sure that you're pushing down when you come up, push through that front heel. So it helps with the drive, helps with the balance, helps with the glute engagement. Five more seconds. Oh, yeah. And last rep. <sighs> oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Okay. Let's go for that extra rep. Last exercise. Let's okay. go. Last exercise. What we're going to be doing is we're going to take our right leg. We're going to lunge forward, then we'll lunge to the side, then we'll lunge to the back, then we'll take our left leg back. Back, over to the side, and over to the front. All the way around. All the way We're around. We're going the well. 3-4-60. Full 360. <laughs> Three, two, two, one. one. Let's, Let's go. go. Right Set leg front. forward, side, and back. Change legs. Back. Oh. <laughs> to the side. <laughs> to the front. To the front. Okay, let's do this thing. Right leg forward. Four. To the side. To the back. And oh, left leg back. Back. Side. side. Forward, change legs. Oh, it's like relearning coordination all over again. And change legs, back, back. side, side. forward. Back. Let's try and get in one more rep. One, two. two. You said one more, does that include three. the other leg? <laughs> and oh, yes. you did then. <laughs> that was a yes. Three, and, and we're done. done. Whew. Okay, so I don't know about you, but I've actually managed to work up quite a little bit of a sweat, and that's just one round of this workout. If you like doing it, you can do it again two, three, four more times. Uh, and Kelly always closes for the show at this point, because I'm like, I usually don't have any breath left. But we've got great episodes. We'll be back on Wednesday and Friday at 8 p.m. on Get Active TV. What have we got coming up? It's all about you and your career. So for those of you who may have had to pivot as mm -hmm. a result of losing your job, maybe, or just because you Looking feel like a, a career direction change in life. You know? Not one direction, new direction. Sorry, sorry. But we have a career consultant coming in yep. on Wednesday, and we're also going to be having what we call a, a real human, a real much human. like during our sleep episode. So we've got someone coming in who is looking for a little bit of a career change. So we're going to have that chat on what new direction she can take. So if that's you and you feel like you need to take a step in a new direction, make sure you join us 8 p.m. on Wednesday on Get Active TV. Like and share and tell all your friends as well. And make sure you join us, Kelly and Barbara, on Kickback with Kelly and, and Barbara, Barbara on Bye. Wednesday at 8 p.m. Bye-bye.